holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. For the elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Can you hear the sound of heaven? It's the sound of many waters. Oh, it's the sound of worship coming from his throne. As men from every nation, as they lift their voice to make his glory known, they're singing holy, holy. Oh 
our saints. Glory to God. Uh, what's something that you, what's something that you've been learning on here? Now, saints, let me deal with something mighty here. Solomon, Solomon, before he unraveled all that God did for him, he was a prophetic sower. He saw that thousand burnt offerings in his mind. His mind saw that thousand burnt offerings. He saw himself sowing that in the spirit. Why did he pick a thousand? Why did he pick 999? Why did he pick 997? Why did he pick 800? Because thousand is a number in the heavenlies. It brings pleasure to God. God moves in thousands. Why you think that Enoch, he saw tens of thousands of angels. Jude chapter one. How many chapters in Jude? One. How many of us have them? One. Friends with one or not. In Jude chapter one. Enoch saw tens of thousands. Why did it say a day with the Lord is like a thousand years? Why does he say a thousand years? Why does Revelation talk about the thousand year reign? Because in the spirit realm, thousand bring God pleasure. So saints, when, when, when Solomon, while he was saying, Lord, I want to pleasure you. What he saw spinning in the heavens was thousands. Oh, Jesus. So, saints, that's why when somebody on earth, when you pray those type of prayers, Lord, if you just give me $1,000, he going to give it to you. Because guess what? He going to give you the power to create his pleasure. Saints, everything that you got belongs to God. So, saints, how do you really pleasure God? Everything belongs to him. He just letting you borrow it. And then, saints, the powerful thing about it is that God... Even though he let you borrow his stuff, he let you be the owner and then he keep on increasing your ownership. So he said, you be a ruler of a few things. I'll make you ruler over much things. So what is he doing? He just increasing you. That's why Psalm chapter 115 verse 14 says that the Lord shall increase you more and more. Deuteronomy chapter one verse 11 says that the Lord God of your father's give you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised. Now saints, why they said the Lord God of your fathers? Because we're dealing with that Abrahamic anointing. But then we step into a second dimension and there, there go the Isaac anointing. And then we second to, step into a third dimension, which is the Jacob anointing. And saints, then if we want to go even further into a fourth dimension, we step into the Israel anointing. Because Jacob turned himself into Israel. Remember, he said to the angel, the cherubim, I will not let you go until you bless me. And when the angel blesses him, changes his name to Israel. So that's the fourth dimension of blessing. So the Lord God of, uh, 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 of your fathers give you a thousand times more and bless you. Why did he say a thousand times more? Because thousand is pleasure in the spirit realm. Saints, I remember I had a flip phone. I had one of them cheap phone, boy. I think it was a food stamp phone or something like that. It was one of them phones that if you took a picture, it looked like you was in India posing next to Pokemon. Don't think about that. It just, it just the pixel was all wrong. Like you try, to take a, you try to take a picture real good, but it looked like the pixel made you look orange. It made you look green and orange and all of that. Looked like you were standing next to three cookie monsters and all of that. You try to take a picture like that. You try to pose like that. You, you, you look all orange. Your teeth look... You know what I'm saying? It don't look all that boisterous. It don't look. You try to flirt with people. You try to get on the dating list like that. Did she? She talk about where you from? Shut, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I don't want to talk to you no way. I don't want to talk to you no way. Don't you try to make fun of my phone, man. I got the players in the back. The players in the back laughing at me. <laughs> I only got two cent on my books. The players in the back laughing at me. They got two cent on my books. Everybody that went to jail is a liar. You ain't never met somebody that came out of jail that wasn't lying. <laughs> you, 
Yeah, man, they caught me on that five, that 25 to life, man. They're talking about I stabbed him. I, not stabbed him, man, but I, I broke the case. <laughs> you come to find out why he got locked up because the brother didn't want to pay all his parking tickets. He done parked downtown over seven times and didn't pay it. There was a warrant sent out for his arrest. Y'all know the vibes when you get that warrant sent out for your arrest. Saints, why when you get a warrant, your whole life stops? <laughs> you can't even breathe normal no more. It's like, it's like they're coming to get me. Everywhere you go, like, you be nervous. You see the cops down the street. you like, no, nah, I'm about to turn around. Hey, man, my business place right here. Yeah, but we taking the other way. We taking the other way. There's another way to get around the back. <laughs> and Saints, you know, when you're driving in your car and all of your tags and everything is expired, the cop be driving up next to you. You turn off for no reason. <laughs> and say, them, some of them cops are some niggas. You know how they some niggas? Because they follow you. They got the nerves to follow you. To see what you about to do. You got to act all normal. Act like, you know. You got to act all normal and stuff. And they, they got the nerves to follow you everywhere you go. You saw me turn off from you because I felt, I felt a virus chasing me. I felt, I felt paranoia in the back. And saints, that'd be the worst when you're driving with somebody and their tail lights is broken. And you like, please don't put your foot on the gas. <laughs> and you put your foot on the gas, everybody going to see that one of the lights ain't working. <laughs> I don't want to have ketchup all over my shirt, man. I just bought this shirt. This is the new FUBU. New FUBU. Hey, new FUBU. Some of y'all know it. Y'all know it. It was wearing that FUBU. You thought you was hot. You didn't know you was poor. <laughs> you didn't know that you was poor when you stepped out with some Fubu Tims. <sighs> Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. The Lord God of your father bless you as he has promised you. The Lord God of your fathers bless you as he has promised you. Give you a thousand times more. And saints, what you want to catch is about the thousand. The thousand is a pleasure number to the father. So saints, why, why have we even received the revelation from the Holy Spirit about the thousand dollar seed? Because the thousand dollar seed, it carries weight and pleasure in God. It's powerful. Now there's other numbers. I told you about numbers in, in different uh, I told you about something that um, 700 is a check unlocking seed. Um, 500 is exactly, exactly we're dealing with the, the grace of God, the shield of grace, the shield of favor rather. It's like a, a like a, a, a favor type seed. We dealt with the 300 is like is, is a war. It's like you battling. And that's why I even was telling y'all about that 318 earlier this year, which we have passed on from that because some of y'all solidified with me. You see what I'm saying? That's why God be moving on from different seed assignments because you solidify. So you ought to tap yourself on the back. Somebody got to tap you. Tap yourself on the back. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. Because there's a solidifying grace that happens when you're sowing. Your soul takes on loyalty to the Holy Ghost when you're sowing. And you receive a raw anointing through the seed. What's powerful about seed sowing is that you receive a raw anointing. So you get raw in the power of God and your mind receives new routes. When you sow and seed, your mind starts shifting to different roles and different paths and different routes. You start finding new paths in the spirit. It's the highway of the upright. Uh, Proverbs talk about that. The highway of the upright. The highway of the upright. Because, because when you sow and seed, you start receiving new routes from the Holy Ghost. New paths. 
That's why you think different. That's why your energy changes. That's why your focus changes. That's why your words changes. That's why your company changes. That's why your dreaming changes. Because you're receiving new routes. Saints, seed sowing is what created the rainbow. <laughs> Listen to what I just said. Listen to what I just said there. Seed sowing created the rainbow. Have you ever seen a rainbow in the sky? Guess what birthed that rainbow? The seed. It was after Noah sowed that God said, I will no longer destroy the earth again with the floods of waters. And he said, I'm going to make a covenant with you and it shall be a rainbow. The seed is so powerful that it birthed a visible sign in the heavens. Saints, what is really the rainbow? It was God drawing in the heavenlies. So saints, the seed unleashed the artistic side of God. The seed unleashed the creativity of the Father. Saints, he took his crowns he took his paintbrush and started drawing in the sky because Noah sowed that seed. He felt so good. God took a notepad and started drawing in the heavens. God started drawing in the heavens because of the seed. Ha, ha, oh my, ha. Understand how powerful seed sowing is that it caused the Lord to decorate the heavens. Saints, if the Lord colored the heavens because of Noah's seed, how much more the Lord is coloring your life while you sowing? Sowing unlocks the coloring of God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah, ah. Sowing unleashes the crayons, the crayons of Christ. If you want to get the Lord to get his crowns and his paintbrush, start sewing. Because now he about to decorate your life and beautify your life. See, colors was meant to create beauty. That's why God created colors, because they got beauty to it. They have anointings to it. Why do you think that Joseph had on a coat of many colors? Because he had on a coat of many mantles. It was called a coat because a coat is something that you put on you. He had a mantle on him that was representing all of the creativity of God. That's why Joseph, even when he got into the jail, he found a way to be creative in being a solution. So when the butler and the baker came in, he found a way to encourage them, prophesy to them. Interpret their dreams. He was a problem solver because he had on the coat of many colors. When his brothers took away the coat of many colors, what they didn't understand that the coat, it was spiritual more than physical. They saw a physical coat, but he had on a spiritual coat because the creativity just kept on flowing. The prosperity just kept on flowing and the money just kept on coming. The money just kept on coming because he had on a spiritual coat of many colors. See, I want you to understand when you operating in the color power of God. The color power of God is, is different levels of doctrine and wisdom. I received the colors of God on my soul. You ain't never said that a day in your life. But, but you got to meet an apostle and prophet and talk like that. Ah! Ah, you so you, you, you got to meet an apostle and prophet to talk like that. I received the colors of God on my soul. I promise you, you ain't never prayed that a day in your life. But see, this apostolic. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, when the apostle, when the prophet is moving, you start stepping into heavenly vocabulary. You start talking mysteries. The Father in heaven is coloring my soul. The Father in heaven is coloring my soul. See, seed sowing, it creates an atmosphere for the creativity of the Lord. Saints, Adam was in a garden all by himself. And while he's sowing seed, the Lord creatively finds a way to create a woman. I'm going to say this and I, I, I want to say this. And um, if Adam never sold, there would have never been a vagina. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I heard the father just said that. <laughs> if Adam never sold, there would have never been um. There would have never been a vagina. God made that woman out of thinking about Adam's pleasure. Saints, all Adam was doing in that garden was sowing as a single man. God said, it's not good for you to be doing me good and I ain't doing you something good. Show you something good. I ain't never heard that before, but I just heard the father say that to me. Father in heaven. I'm talking about the Lord God Almighty. The father just said to me, if Adam never sold, I would have never created the vagina. I would have never created a woman with lips and hips. He says, son, tell my people that even sex is just seed sowing. He said, son, I created my whole world off of seed sowing. Everything need a seed to even be. Saints, even birds got seed in them. You're not hearing me. <laughs> You're not hearing me. Oh, Jesus. You're not hearing me. Huh? Huh? Saints, a turtle got seed inside of him. The whole earth is built off a of seed sowing. If God created the whole earth off a of seed sowing, what have you refused to create because you're not seed sowing? Your whole life is in the seed. Ah. If God built his whole world, the heavens, the earth, because of seed. What have you refused to create because you ain't sowing seed? Saints, why you think that so many people got so much prayer requests? Because they are refusing to operate in what could answer that prayer request. There is nothing that ever happens to you that your seed can't fix it. Your body was created to be healed because of seed. What you think Adam was going to do when Adam wanted to operate in answers from God? 
God said, I gave you every herb bearing seed, every herb bearing seed. That means everything that you will encounter in this life, everything that you will ever encounter on the earth, I'm going to give you seed to solve it. Saints, Adam never prayed to God. Because God gave him the same weapons and same materials that he used as God. He gave him the same stuff. So he didn't have to pray to God because God gave him the same stuff that God used to create and solve and bless and multiply and increase and deliver. He gave him the same stuff. He gave Adam the same materials. What he was going to be praying for. Huh? Because he had the same stuff that you was asking God for in prayer today. And guess what? You know what God gave him? God didn't give him a prayer life. God gave him a seed. <laughs> That's why some people got a prayer life, but they ain't got no money to buy no house. Because the original thing was not prayer. We pray because we got to watch and pray lest we fall. Adam wasn't worried about falling because he didn't even have a knowledge of what it meant to fall. Oh, God said, don't eat from this tree. Adam was flowing in the great God Jehovah's anointing. God didn't give Adam a fast. God gave Adam a seed. You'll be fasting because you're trying to unlock something that sin came to pit a blanket over. He gave him a seed. Every time he sowed his seed, he was denying himself. And he didn't have to take up his cross because there was no sin. All he was doing was taking up the glory. Oh, Jesus. He was the first glory carrying man. Adam was the first God man. But how was he operating as God? Even though he was made in the form of man. Because of the seed. God said use what I use. Saints. What did the Bible talk about? It talked about how Lucifer was in the garden of God. What do you think that the great God Jehovah was doing in that garden? He was sowing. God got sperm. How the hell you think he gave you sperm and he ain't got no sperm? You got a lot of nerves. God got sperm. What you think that he was doing in the heavens? What you think that he was doing in the heavens? You think that it's called sons of God because it sounds good to the ear? There was the children he produced. God was duxing somebody up in the heavens. I already, I already told you a secret. Those of you all, I'm not going to keep on going back there. Um, hit me on my email. I'll tell you the secret again. I ain't going to keep on preaching back and forth. And, but I don't like to repeat myself if you know something about me. So if you want to know the secret to that, I'll tell you the secret to that. Especially those of you all that sowing to me, you deserve to know the secret. Because once you start sowing seed, you can receive the raw anointing. But God had a family. God didn't give you stuff as a man that he don't got. You was made in the image and likeness of God. So why you got sperm in your body? Because God got sperm in his body. God is spirit, but even the spirit got a spirit body. Why you think that Jesus is the body in which the whole Godhead dwells? Saints, I don't want this to sound too difficult for you because if, you, if I talk about the Godhead, it might sound a, sound a little weird, okay? It might sound a little perplexed. You might say, well, Jesus, and then there's God, and then there's Jesus, and then there's the spirit. Let me just give you a secret. God is spirit. But God is 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 an object that is worship. Prophet Joshua Holmes is a God. 
Elijah is a God. Moses is a God. Peter is a God. That's why he told Ananias and Sapphira, come worship me with your seed. Where is that? Ananias said, this is all I got. And he said, oh, oh you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got no worship? All right. A God is something that is worship. And saints, let me tell you a secret about a prophet. You can't even unlock the prophet's reward until you worship the prophet. That's what the father was telling me a couple days ago. The father told me this over 48 hours ago. He said, son, the reason why a lot of people don't unlock the prophet's reward is because they got to worship the prophet to get it. You got to do what the prophet say in order for you to get the prophet's reward. What did Elijah do? All he tell the woman, give me your last meal. I know that you was about to give your son, but give it to me. What was the Shunammite woman doing? She was worshiping Elisha. She was worshiping him so strong that she even went to her husband and said, can we build on a place for Elisha? Because she worshiping him. But saints, you got to understand these things in the spirit. Saints, the prophet's reward, you have to see the prophet as God for you to get it. Because the prophet going to teach you and talk to you and mentor you and father you and cover you. And the prophet going to be telling you instructions and telling you counsels and telling you suggestions. If you don't worship the prophet, you don't get the prophet's reward. But the father told me this over 48 hours ago. He said, son, the secret of why people don't get the prophet's reward because they got to worship you in order for them to unlock it. The prophet's reward don't come because you say, oh, I got a relationship with God and God talked to me too. And, 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 and I got these two bumps on my forehead. And saints, when a prophet comes into your life, you receive an impartation of humility in the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Saints, some people they don't, they, 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 they don't have these revelations. Do you know that there are, there are prophets that don't know what I just said? Because of rank. But you think about somebody like me that have released the revelation of 21 all across the world and even governmental stuff is submitted to 21 because I said so. Think about it, that we had a whole president in office that was getting impeached and the day in which they was going to confront the whole matter was on the 21st. And imagine somebody like me. So God, God the Father talked to me different. Saints, I want to say something powerful to you in the spirit. And it's shocking. The Lord said this to me over 24 hours ago. And uh, the Lord told me that the secret to Moses and Elijah is that they are brothers. You're not hearing me. And saints, the Lord told me, he said, son, I have shared this with no man on earth. He said, there's not one person on earth that I ever shared this with. There's not one prophet that God ever spoke that to. One, not even one. Not in a uh, hundred years ago, thousand years ago, five thousand years ago. Nobody knows that. He said, son, I've given you that revelation. Because I've seen Elijah come minister to me in these last 21 days, these, these 10 days. I've seen Moses come minister to me. Moses gave me the term and said, the term that describes me and you to the people is God prophets. He said, I was a God prophet. I was a God and prophet at the same time. And the people didn't want to worship me. So the ground opened up. They didn't want to worship me. And so God struck them 
with all type of death. Even the Bible said that serpents came and bit them and killed them. Why did the serpents come and bite them? Because Moses was operating as a serpent himself. They didn't want his serpentry. So now demonic serpents. The secret is, he, King Jesus said, behold, I give you power over the serpent and the scorpion. I already told you that mystery. Why did King Jesus say that? Because King Jesus was a serpent himself. So he's saying all the serpents are underneath me. So I'm going to give you power over them. What you think that King Jesus was doing? King Jesus was saying, I'm the chief serpent. Saints, why would King Jesus say be wise as serpent? That means that King Jesus has serpent wisdom inside of him. Because who going to give you the wisdom to be wise as a serpent? The devil can't give you wisdom. Do you think that God is going to let the devil teach you? No. The anointing teaches you all things. So there is an anointing of a serpent. How could you have an anointing? That means that that's the power of God. So that means that God has a dimension of power called serpent. You heard a miracle power. You heard a healing power. You heard a well power. Well, there is serpent power. I feel the anointing on here. I feel the anointing on here. Somebody been having heartburn is being healed right now. Heartburn in your chest. Heartburn is being healed right now. Heart uh, congestion is being healed right now. There's somebody, you've been having this outbreak with your skin because the weather is changing. The weather is changing, so there's an outbreak in your skin right now. I got a word for you. Listen to what I'm saying here. Lukewarm showers. But you're going to have to be wise because when you scratch your skin just a little bit, you send off an irritation and then demons use that to torment you. You see what I'm saying? So what you're going to have to do is pit lotion and you're going to have to be real delicate in discipline. Because when your nerves try to play tricks on you, get you to scratch your skin it's to irritate you so that when you take a shower, my, 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 you take a shower, now the irritation is, and, it, and, and it, it keeps on going and going and going and going. Saints, all these weather conditions is not the way that God wanted it to be. So you're going to encounter some stuff. Saints, um, if you ever have sickness or disease or pain, your pain, your sickness and disease manifest the most in the night. I know that because I used to have sickness. But I ain't got one sickness on me. I ain't got one disease on me. So I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm anointed to impart grace to you. If you got sickness, disease, or any pain of any kind, it manifests the most in the night. Why? 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 Because remember what I told you about night. Night is really the time frame where demons feel more comfortable. Demons attack you in the day, but demons feel very comfortable in the nighttime. And the nighttime is also a place, not only where demons attack you, but it's a place where God tests you. You know why God tests you? Because it looks like he's not there. When, when you feel uncomfortable, when stuff goes on that goes against your divinity, it humbles you because it feels like God is not there and it feels like your Godship is not there. But guess what? You're more powerful during the times of attack than the times of comfort. Process is better than pleasure because pleasure can numb you to the pattern in which you operate in to unlock the pleasure. Process is better than pleasure because process is a place where you are subjected to learn, but pleasure is a place where you can stop learning. Though he was a son, Hebrews 5, 8, though he was a son, though he was a recipient of pleasure. It says that he learned obedience process. 
So though he was a son, he's in a position of pleasure. He learned obedience, which is a position, a process. Hebrews 5 Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. It says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Some of y'all be wasting your time. You should be using your time to memorize scriptures. Some of y'all be wasting your time. You waste time. Uh, the more scriptures you memorize, the more genius you become. Some of y'all be wasting too much time. Your mind, you shouldn't even have no idle thoughts. You waste your time. You waste your time. You, some of you all could be way further ahead. And guess what? I got more money than you. And watch, I still memorize scripture. I still study. See, some of y'all waste your time. Some of y'all don't got as much money as me, but I still study. You got to understand People that go far, we do a lot of stuff that you be, you be, you, you be, you be, you be, you be, uh, you be sleeping on God. You be sleeping on God because you be having time on your hands and you don't, you don't use it correctly. You should be learning scriptures and memorizing them and hiding them in your heart and securing them in you so that when the day of trouble come, you could arise and be bold and courageous and overcome and speak to storms and command and release and loose and bind. You, you, you waste your time. You waste your time. You waste your time. You waste your time. You should be learning stuff in the Bible. This Bible never gets old. This Bible never gets old. This Bible never gets old. You should be learning stuff in this Bible. You should be meditating in the law of God. How you going to step into wealth and you don't even know how to study the Bible? Huh? Saints, I got to be honest with you. I didn't get to wealth just, man, you got to study the word. You got to meditate the word. The word got to become your love. You ain't going to step into money, moving and all that different type of stuff until you love this word. You got to have respect for every seed. And the word of God is a seed. Mark chapter 4, the source, saw of the word. The word has to be something that you love and cherish. And when you love something, you memorize it. When you love somebody, you memorize what they like. You know if they like a certain candy. You know if they like a certain garment. You know if they like a certain atmosphere. You know if they like a certain TV show. Why do you memorize what people love? Because when you love, it births a memory. Love births a memory. And memory is supposed to activate a fresh way to love. Because memory actually lets you remember what somebody likes so that you can increase it. Love births a memory, so why don't you remember the word if you love it? You see what I'm saying? Think about it. 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 Luke chapter 18, verse 8. 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 It says, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. When the Son of Man cometh, why did it say that he's the Son of Man? Let me break this down. I feel a strong anointing. And see, saints, the reason why uh, 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 there's so much power here, because saints, we activated those seraphims the other, other day as well. But it's kind of crazy, right? Because I always do this, though. <laughs> so, 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 saints, if I say the anointing is strong, like when was it ever weak? <laughs> If I, if I tell you the glory of God falling, when, when did it stop falling? If I tell you that it's a strong word, when was the word ever not strong? Luke chapter 18, verse 8. It says that when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on the earth? Now, saints, I want to pinpoint this text and real talk real strong on him. Luke chapter 18, verse 8, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on earth? Luke chapter 18, verse 8, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on the earth? You know what you're doing right now? Some of y'all going to memorize that text right now. You're going to memorize that text. And saints, the secret to memorizing scriptures is that you have to say it. Not to be heard by people, you got to say it to yourself because your mind records Everything that comes out your mouth. Good or bad. So. It's good for you to whisper things. Luke 
Luke chapter 18, verse 8. There's gold in the fire. That's why you can listen to a song and it replays in your mind and, and you're not even thinking about it. Saints, um, I remember there, 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 there was a year and <laughs> I was meditating. I heard this song. God said, go look for the song. Crazy thing was about it was Chris Brown was the one that sung the song. <laughs> Chris Brown. And sings the song. It was wild, man. Let me keep on moving along strong. Let me keep on moving along strong. <laughs> Let me keep on moving along strong. Now, Luke chapter 18, verse 8. <laughs> Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Look what it says right here. It says that when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, why did it say when the Son of Man comes? Now, look, it's calling him the Son of Man. Now, it's talking about Jesus. Why is King Jesus the Son of Man? Because, saints, man, if they never sinned, it was like they was going to be the spiritual father of Jesus. They were going to operate as the sons of God, basically. Because remember, the father, when he has a son, the son is carrying his nature, his DNA. So King Jesus said that he's the son of man because the first man was really supposed to be Jesus. But he rejected the office. So saints, why would King Jesus call himself the second Adam? Why would you want to be the second of something that's demonic? Because Adam wasn't demonic. Adam had to go find. So watch this. Luke chapter 18 verse 8. It says, when the son of man cometh, will he find? So that finding factor, it determines whether or not Jesus is operating or Satan. Because Adam, he found the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam, the woman, she found the serpent. You see what I'm saying? So, Finding will decide your eternity. Because it's going to decide your conduct. When the Son of Man comes, will he find? Why is he the Son of Man? Because guess what? Man, he's saying, I came from man. Man was where I started to birth myself. But when man died, uh, denied it, and basically died, because he said, you shall surely die. Now Jesus comes as the son of man. He came through the line of what is considered man. So that man can come through the line that's considered God. So Luke chapter 18, verse 8, it says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, saints, watch what he says. Will he find faith? So that means that it's going to be something that he's attempting to discover. It's something that he has been seeking. It's something that he's been looking for. It's a conduct he's been looking for. And guess what it is? Power to pleasure him. He's looking for people that are pleasuring him. They're pleasuring him with their time, their schedule, their submission, their rawness, their boldness, their acceptance of his will. He said, will I, fly, will I find pleasure makers? Will I 
What does God encounter when he encounters you? Does he have to convince you? Does he have to persuade you? Or are you too busy creating his pleasure that none of those things even have place in your soul? The Bible says give no place to the devil. Why? Because Jesus don't want nobody in his house. Je Jesus don't want nobody living inside of his heart. Jesus don't want nobody living in his soul. Jesus don't want nobody living in his thought life. Your life is hid with God in Christ. With Christ in God. With God in Christ. With Christ in God. With God in Christ. With Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now, let me, let me stay here. Let me stay here. Let me stay here for a quick second. When the Son of Man comes, will he find? So, saints, the real thing that God is trying to discover is woman and men that wants to pleasure him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, why is he looking for faith? Because he's looking for people that want to explore his pleasures. He's looking for people that are entertaining the power to create his pleasures. Their mind is not thinking about when I'm going to get out this season. What is happening to me? Because they're too busy creatively finding what will bring God pleasure. What speech will I use? See, your wisdom is really connected to your pleasure towards God. Because saints, when you talk about a wise man and a wise woman, they do things that bring pleasure to God. If it's, see, why didn't David kill Saul? Not because David didn't have the power to kill Saul, but that wasn't going to bring any pleasure to God. Why doesn't Mordecai bow down to Haman? Because Mordecai knows as a prophet, this will not bring pleasure to God. Why does prophet Joshua Holmes not acknowledge Joe Biden? Because I know that it doesn't bring pleasure to God. <laughs> Why would I acknowledge somebody that does, that does not bring pleasure to God? The truth of the matter is, if President Trump is not in office, it's just nobody in office. It don't matter if somebody there for four years. It's still nobody in office. Prophets do that. <laughs> the prophet looked at Ahab and said, Israel don't got no master. And Ahab was the president over the land. He was the king over the land. And he said, the president, there's no master here. There's no leadership here. There's nobody here to lead the people. I saw in the heavens, there's nobody to lead the people. You say, well, prophet, you scared that they're going to cut your head off? You say, scared they're they going to shoot you? Baby, if they kill me faster, I'll go on about, about my business to my new heavens. <laughs> I ain't worried about none of that stuff, man. Just come on, man. You got to shoot correct, man. You can't miss me with the bullets. All right? This is not money bag, hey, yo. Get me while you can, man. Come on, flip it right here, man. The people like to shoot you in your toe for you to suffer. Man, don't shoot me in the toe. Shoot me where... Come on, man. Hit me, man. Don't hit me with them Tupac shots. <laughs> hit me for real, man. Seems like people get nervous to talk. So, where they cut our heads off? Man, man, cut my head off, man. I ain't worried about that, none of that, man. I'm going about, I'm going about my business. Saints, what, 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 what is scary in this life? Tell the truth. What is really scary? Nothing. Nothing. Ain't nothing scary in this life. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So what is, what, what is really scary? You got the power to change everything that comes your way. 
You got to seed. You got to praise. You got to focus. You got a dominion. You got a decree in your mouth. You got the power to change everything in your life. Saints, all that I got right now, I'm not worried about nothing. I don't live in fear. You know why? Because I got the power to regain it back. I ain't worried about nothing because I got the secret. Once you got the secret, you ain't worried about nothing. Once you got the ingredient, you can cook the cake at your will. I saw my way out for the rest of my life. I'm still sawing my way out. What well, I'm sawing my way out of? I don't want to ever stop pleasuring the Father. I'm sowing my way out of ever not being the one giving God the pleasure. And since God anoints people that give him the most pleasure, why do you think I'm so anointed? Huh? Why do you think, why, why, why do you think I got so much oil that I give to you? All of that stuff is activated. You say, well, probably God give the anointing off of mercy. Well, 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 go show, go, go, go show, <laughs> go show me a nigga that do 12 hour broadcast. Go, go show me a nigga that do 12 hour broadcast straight. No pee break, no food break, no nothing. Show me. Show, show me since he gave by mercy. God be given mantles because of dedication. And people that respect the weapons he give them. When you respect the weapons, when you disrespect demons, and when you start stepping in that glory of God, nothing can stop you. You got power to break the neck of the enemy. And you was created to be wealthy. You was created to be rich. And you was created to have the power to get wealth moving constantly in your direction. What can separate you from the love of God in Christ? It's not principality nor power. It's not peril nor sword. It's not height nor depth. It's not things present or things to come. You got an inseparable anointing with you and the Father. You just got to walk in it. If King Jesus said everything I see my Father do, I do it as well. So why did King Jesus call money out of the fish mouth? Because you're going to find in heaven that God got money in fish's mouth in heaven. You ain't never heard that before. The father got fishes in heaven with money inside of it. They got gold inside of fishes inside of heaven. Imagine you talking to a lion in heaven and it got a piece of silver and gold for you to go enjoy yourself in heaven. Saints, even in heaven, God still got a currency system. But see, his government is pure. You still going to be buying stuff in heaven? He said, I only do what I see my father do. So if King Jesus didn't see the father do that, why would he be calling gold out of a fish's mouth? Why is he calling money out of a fish's mouth then? Because he saw the father do it. You, you never, I know you never heard that, right? Huh? Supernatural money is the activity of heaven. Supernatural money is the activity of heaven. People in heaven all the time step into wealth and new levels of wealth. And guess what? What you think will happen in the new heaven and new earth? You're going to be sowing in the new earth. Saints, that's why God trained you about the kingdom now. If you want to meet a man or a woman that love the Lord and they'll do anything for him, you, 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 they become super freaks for God. Supernatural freaks, right? Because this ain't got nothing to do with the devil. They are underneath a raw anointing. Why? Because they have learned sowing down here. They have learned sowing down here. And saints, you know when you meet a real sower, because when you meet a real sower, a sower is down for whatever. Whatever the fathers say, that's what they do. If the father say, I want you to go do a mission trip in Africa. By the way, God ain't telling none of y'all to do that, so please. People over in America try to go over to Africa, and people over in Africa try to come over to America. Something wrong. Something wrong. Some of y'all don't. We won't get slapped, huh? We, we won't go to that. Huh? 
Huh? People over in America trying to go over there talking, I'm going over to Puerto Rico. The people over in Puerto Rico trying to come over here. Or I'm going over on Hawaii on a vacation. The people over in Hawaii wish that they can come over here. Or I want to go visit. I want to go visit. I want to go visit over there by Venezuela. Let me tell you something. Venezuela wish that they can come over here, baby. You don't see how they be jumping over the big old walls. They don't care if there's a big old throngs. They got them big old strong throngs up there. I ain't say no thongs, I said throngs with an H and an R, something that went wrong with the throngs. I said something that went wrong with the throngs. The throngs done went wrong, the throngs done went wrong. Let me see that throng wrong, wrong. <laughs> the brother up there jumping over walls in the video. He's jumping over walls. Let me see that throng. Cisco, wow, boy, he had us turning our hair silver and stuff. We was up in school. There's always a brother named Carton that's bisexual that always want praise brand. Praise dance because his mama not around. His name Carton. He up there. Let me see that throne. <laughs> it's a name always Carton. We all know. Uh, uh, never mind. I don't want to talk about it. Moving along strong, moving along strong. <laughs> Saints, that'd be the worst thing when you're in school and you're trying, you're trying to fight because everybody up there trying to pitch you to fight and then you get knocked out. Saints, I, I remember. Because see, back then... You know, I ain't believe in that fighting stuff, but sometimes people try to, they try to check you. You know what I'm saying? You got that warrior inside of you still. So i, I never forget. I had I had just bought this chain, right? I, I had this chain, right? So I came, I mean, I, I came up and saints, uh, you know, like when eighth graders, they get jealous of you because they think that you attracting their, 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 their level of grades and they're not getting no play. But see, I was just a, I was just a young boy. I was like in the sixth grade, man. I'm up there, fresh out of fifth grade, still young. You know what I'm saying? Just young, in 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 big old whippersnappers, Megan Stallions. They come up there, and tell us, "Oh, he cute, he cute." And so, so brothers try to fight me. They try to fight me. <laughs> they try to they try to fight me, huh? They try to fight me. So they pulled up on me at the end of school. I ain't had no, I ain't had none of my road dogs with me. Now I think about it, sometimes I laugh at it because I always ran with a pack. I always had a pack. Now, here's the crazy thing, though. I was always influencing them. Like, I would talk to them about Bible scriptures. Like, I would talk to them about... Th then, we, you got you to have about two hitters that you know that they're demons. <laughs> but it's good to have them around. You're not trying to cast out the devil on that. None of that. The two hitters. I'm talking about when I was in school, man. Schools, schools, schools. Towards the generation I got up, the schools was bad, bad. So, since I, I, I listen, I up there, I'm walking at the end of school, and I said something prophetically. Cause since I used to, um, I used to be like extremely alert. Any, anywhere I go, like I just be in another place, but I'm like, I'm spying out everything spiritually. As I got towards the car ride circle, I felt darkness, extreme darkness come over me. I was like, something about to happen. So, so I'm walking and I, I got this, I got this, I got this big old necklace on me. <laughs> so, so, the, so the eighth grader boy, they pop out, get the chain, and they went go tug it. The man jumped out, pulled my thing, tugged me over like that, 
and saints, I came back. Boom! <laughs> now, this is a true story as the Lord lives. As I stand before God, it's a true story. But my reflex was so fast that he wasn't expecting it. And then I, I, I don't think that he really thought that I was going to uh, just, just come with Because he, he pulled me like that. And bam! And since when he went out, since all of his men that was with him, they didn't even help him. So saints, they went go suspend me, right? And and the, the, the principal was jumping to conclusions. Oh, you knocked him out, da, 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 all that different type of stuff. So they looked on the camera. And when everything was said and done, they saw that it was really self-defense. <laughs> the nigga was almost dead, and I ain't feel bad about it. <laughs> I ain't I ain't telling him to pick up his face or nothing. I was about to keep on walking, actually. The only thing that was going to catch me, that, that people started screaming, they said, boom, you know, the little kids. <laughs> you know, children, some instigators. They blow stuff. You, They always going to snitch. So they blew it out of proportion. I was going to keep on walking and get inside my car and sit down and hold it. Get inside my car, man. Just get inside my car, man. That's all. That's what I'm about to do. I'm about to shoot, shoot. Just keep on driving, mama. Come on, come on. I want me a happy meal. I want a happy meal. I want a happy meal. That's what I want. I want, I want some cheeseburger. I want fries with salt on it. I want some nuggets, some fries, a Sprite. <laughs> they about five people getting hungry right now. They about five people getting hungry on here. There about five people getting hungry on here. About five, five of y'all getting hungry. Five, about five of y'all. I said, one, two, three, four, five. I said, about three, five, four. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Saints, if you ever been in school, none of the thugs could read. They used to disrespect the teacher because they didn't want nobody to find out that they couldn't spell. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes, I. <laughs> the thoughts can't never read. <laughs> the thoughts can't never read. They be up there trying to disrespect the teacher because they don't want you to find out that they can't read. And be trying to disrespect Jesus. Man, listen, I ain't got to do all that, man. I ain't got to do all that, man. Yeah, you ain't got to do it, but still tell me what they say right here. It says, at the park. I still want to hear you say it. Can you spell that out? What word is that? <laughs> no, nah, man, you ain't going to try me, man. No, nah, you ain't going to try me. Man, what word is that? Huh? <laughs> I understand I ain't going to try you, but still, what word is that? I'm not trying you, but what word is that? That's I. Okay, that's the letter I. I don't. You see that apostrophe at the top? Did you see that little line right there that curl around? That look like a little worm, look like a gummy worm. That's that's what they what they call it. They call it something. T, that's don't. Don't T don't. I don't <laughs> I don't want it. That I T is it. Because you ask a thug how to spell it, he going to spell it E-I-H-T. <laughs> E-I-H-T. That's how he going to spell it. Saints, you ever met them people, they, they, they text you like how they talk. I'm fitting her. I'm fitting her. Who got fitting hands? Huh? Where the fins at? Where the fin come in at? <laughs> I'm fins to go. Wait, you got fins that's to go? <laughs> you selling fins? <laughs> you selling fins? That's how it is. You going to have to get some gloves and put them on them fins. You ain't supposed to sell them. <laughs> They're not supposed to be for $5.99 a buck. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Says that be messed up. I ain't even know what people were saying until you get involved in the social media world. You be like, what? 
What is this? And then brothers, don't let them fool you. Some of them women, they be trying to up their act all pretty, but they can't read. <laughs> You gotta be, you gotta be careful. <laughs> hey, let's keep on moving. Let's keep on moving strong and long. Um, first Timothy chapter five, verse seventeen. First, first, first Timothy chapter five. Man, these long eyelashes ain't no joke, man. First Timothy chapter five, verse seventeen. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Look what it says there. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. There are about five people wanting a double cheeseburger. You want a Big Mac. You just want some fries. I just stirred you up. I just stirred you up, man. Somebody's telling me, so there's about five people up here talking about, ba 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 I'm loving this. <laughs> there's about five people up here talking about, ba da ba 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 I'm loving it. The nigga, they, I think the nigga had, he, the, the man up there, he sued, he sued McDonald's, said that they gave him too much quarter pounders and made him fat, I think. I don't know if the story is the story. He blamed him. He said that he got, he got fat. There was a reason that he got titties and all that. The, the, the titties was going to find you whether you liked it or not. They was just a matter of time before they came forth. What is in a man will come out of a man. You had titties before the foundation of the world. That's, the titties was about to come out anyway. It wasn't the burgers. It wasn't the quarter pounders. It was, it was just a quarter. It was a quarter uh, of time until you got to those pounds. That's what happened. It wasn't the quarter pounder. It was... Just a quarter until you got to that level of pounds. That's what happened. You had to wait for a quarter. And then when you got the deuce in the quarter, it came through. You finally got the pounds. That's what happened. Let's and saints, they don't, they don't never want to give you ketchup when you ask them for food. <laughs> the lady be acting like she bought the ketchup. Nigga, give, 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 give me five. Give it, give it, give me ketchup. Give me ketchup. Give me ketchup before I shoot you. You ain't about to catch up. How much do you want? Let me tell you something. You, you, you growl at me like that again. I'm calling pest control. <laughs> I know the tranquilizer number. <laughs> I know the number for tranquilizers. You growl at me like that. You... We got you in the camera. Y'all got a camera. That Rockwiler growl that you just gave me. Since you haven't seen some Rockwiler, some people actually look like pit bulls for real. Since and sometimes people, they have pit bulls so long that they start looking like the pit bull. Since you ever you ever seen a pit bull and said, I know him. That's Claude. That's <laughs> what is Claude doing in a dog body? Well, Claude, Claude, I done seen him. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those that labor in word and in doctrine. I'm going to say this again. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. And then it also says, Especially those that labor in word and in doctrine. Now, this is 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Look what it says here. It says, let the elders that rule well. Saints, it's talking about ruling well. What does ruling well mean? It's saying that God has anointed you to rule over people. Ruling well means that people, they leave their sicknesses while they're listening to you. So they, they were sin sick. They were sick of rejection. They were sick in curses. They were sick in distractions. They were sick in low self-esteem. They were sick in weaknesses. They were sick in rebellion. They were sick in speaking death, connecting the wrong people. But now they are well 
because they receive from your well. So, so it's a ruler of wellness. They rule well. Think about it. You may say, well, probably that don't mean that's what it mean. It mean that you rule well. But how do you know that you're ruling well? People become well. Because they draw it from your well and your well got wellness in it. That's why King Jesus meet the woman at the well. He's ruling well because when he rules her, she becomes well. He had to take her from five jingling jinglings and now he tell her, I rule you well. Now say even King Jesus said, I put a yoke upon your neck. So, so <laughs> I I like this, the Lord said. Tell him, I'll choke him. <laughs> the devil been choking you. It's time for me to choke you. Doggone it. It's time for, because when I choke you, you're not going to suffocate. <laughs> I know somebody going to blow that out of proportion, but so be it. When, when I choke you, you're going to receive life. You done had other people choke you with their counsel, their conversation, their tradition, their religion, their self-righteousness, their carnality, their, their, their fleshy way. But now I'm going to choke you with my yoke and my yoke actually going to set you free. Say, so what you think that they used to do with the yoke? They used to take the yoke and they'll grab you where they want it. Well, well King Jesus said, I got my yoke. I put my yoke around you. But when I grab you in the direction I want you to go, this is to give you life. This is to bless you. This is to give you deliverance and freedom in the hundredfold. This is for you to enjoy heaven on earth. This is for you to step into your paradise. This is for you to step into your promised land. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's a yoke. It's a yoke. Now, saints, let me say this to you. It says, them that rule well, let them be counted worthy for double honor. Now, saints, what do you think about double honor? Double honor is, is, is double sowing. So, saints, you got to understand. When you're sitting underneath a teacher that's giving the death of God to you, you know how God going to talk to you? To so big into them. That's how you know. That you are corresponding with the spirit. Because the spirit going to put that in your mind. And guess what? Even if you ain't got big. You still going to hear the spirit talking to you about sowing big. Why? Because the spirit going to give you a way to sow big. You just going to have to discern when the way comes. He going to give you a way to sow big. You just going to have to discern when the way comes. Because he going to give you a way. He going to put seed in the sower's hand. Now, saints, do you know that God going to put seed in your hand, but you actually could curse yourself and choose to become a thief again after you already been inaugurated as a sower? You've been elected as a sower, but you backtrack, you impeach yourself and become a thief. Oh, Jesus, that was good right there, right? Oh, that was real good. I say that you become elected as a sower and now you impeach yourself. And become a thief. Now you got to do that. Because he going to give seed to the what? The sower. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He going to give seed to the sower. So you you could impeach yourself out of the position of sowing. Because sowing is a heavenly throne. Every sower got a throne. Every sower got an altar. And every sower got a crown. When you're a sower, you got a throne, you got an altar, you got a crown. And saints, all of these different methods and all of these different streams is carrying unusual dominion. A sower has unusual dominion to open the heavens. The sower got the geography to all of God's gates windows, doors, and outpouring of provisional power on the earth. And, and when a sower steps up into their rightful place, you start moving in a seer's anointing to understand the signs and the times financially. You, you become a financial Issachar. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. You ain't, you ain't catch what I just said. I said you become a financial Issachar. And then before you know it, you look out your driveway and you say, whoa, it's a car. Money! Come to me now. Some of y'all didn't catch what I just said just now. <laughs> You're going to have to watch the replay. <laughs> you ain't catch what I just said. When you become a financial Issachar, you understand the calendar of God for the latter rain, the outpouring of God's power to take care of you. Saints, when you become a financial Issachar, you understand when you're in a dispensation where the Lord is testing you financially and you understand the dispensation where he's blessing you financially, where he's multiplying your seed sown. Saints, God not always multiplying your seed. You know what he does? Sometimes he surveillance your seed sowing because he's stretching you to the place that you need to be because there's more for you than you understand. That's why sometimes people sow a certain way because they don't got a revelation what God trying to give them. They sow a certain way. When you understand what God has for you, when you get the true revelation, your sowing submits to that revelation. See, saints, I knew that the Lord had much for me. So I sold out of that revelation of the much and much manifested. See, much got to become your slave. Multimillionaire status got to become your servant because you got to get a revelation of what's in the spirit realm already reserved for you. You got to sow out of the revelation of the reservation. <laughs> you got to sow out of the revelation of the reservation. Some people don't know that God got wealth reserved for them. Some people don't know that riches is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Some people don't know that riches is a river of the Holy Ghost. Some people don't know that they have been scheduled to walk into a spiritual villa. Where the gold is good, where the silver is good, where the provision is good. Some people been in the oven so long, they, they experienced the oven that they done lost sight of God's loving. They've been in the oven that they forgot loving. God got a loving schedule for you. Stop looking at the oven. The fire of a storm is, 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 is going to be subdued and devoured by the fire of wealth. The fire of storms and trials will be devoured and consumed by the fire of wealth. Saints, if he said that he give you the power to get wealth, don't think for one minute that that power won't step into fire and that fire into glory. Why, why you think that is power? It's his demonstration. It gets more intense it gets more stern, it gets more violent, it gets more strong. What you going to do when the Holy Spirit put a strong anointing on you for wealth? What you going to do when the Holy Spirit put a strong anointing for, on you for prosperity? What you going to do when the anointing... Saints, remember I told you, my son? Huh? Huh? Remember I told you, my son? He, 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 got, he got an overflow? Huh? Huh? Remember I told you that when I decreed 70 Days of America, I said he was one of the first ones. He got a supernatural miracle. Look, now my son Elijah, look, he got more money. He got four more thousand. He got 5,000 basically. Huh? Extra to what he already had. Because the money just keep on coming. Prophet Joshua Holmes is anointed. But King Joshua Holmes is glorified. God Joshua Holmes is high and lifted up. The functionality in this ministry, the father them took over this ministry. This the great God Jehovah ministry.
Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Double honor means double sowing, double money. That means that so big into them. Because when they ruling well, they making you well, and they they destroying the gates of hell, they worthy of your money. Look what it says. Let them be counted worthy of double seed sowing. That's what honor is. Honor the Lord with your wealth, your substance, your money. It's saying they worthy. They should be counted worthy of your money. That's what your Bible says. Chapter 5, verse 17. Think about this. Chapter 5, verse 17. So catch what happens. When you get a revelation that your prophet of God is worthy of your money because they rule well, they labor it for you. Guess what happens? The Lord start giving you the prophet's reward because he going to point that prophet on you. That's what he does. You get the prophet's attention, the prophet's reward. Now the prophet can speak something over you. Now the prophet can release the anointing in the direction where you've been harassed. Bring a shift in a change. Now says, watch this here. I'm going to continue on this. But it said, especially those that labor in word and in doctrine. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm continue on this. Let, let me say this here. Why did it say that they labor in word and in doctrine? Because word is where someone gives you a revelation. But doctrine is where they take you to all of the elements of that revelation. And so they might be talking to you about wholeness. But then they start talking to you about Jesus. Telling the man with the issue for 38 years, the infirmity. Will that be made whole? And they start talking about let him sanctify you whole. Spirit, soul, and body. And they start dealing with every aspect of the Bible where wholeness is manifesting. The king stretched out his hands to the man of God, the prophet in 1 Kings 13. And when he stretches out his hand, his hands gets withered. And then the prophet prays and entreated God. And God restores the man's hand back whole. It deals with every aspect of wholeness. Naaman has leprosy. And Elisha tells us to dip in the Jordan seven times. And he comes back with his skin made whole. It deals with all of the doctrine of wholeness. So when it said, it said, uh, let the elder that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Then it says, especially, especially. Why? Because that means that you should give special, special attentiveness to this type of elder that's ruling well. He that is ruling well. And laboring, laboring in word and in doctrine. What it's saying is that this is a teacher that teaches you extra periods of time. They go over and beyond in, in, in teaching you, in mentoring you. They spend countless hours talking to you. It says for them that talk extra, they go over and beyond. What it's really saying is, there's pastors that got two days, Wednesday night service, Sunday service. They talk to you less than 45 minutes and the stuff be shallow. <laughs> the stuff be shallow. They had seven days to study. The stuff be shallow. Just what it is, what it is. Stuff be shallow. Brothers be saying that they on big old fasts. They come talk to you. They got some shallow stuff. Where it's saying, when you see somebody ain't giving you shallow stuff and they bite it, bite it. And they come into you all the time, laboring for you with word and doctrine. Remember what I told you with doctrine? Word is a revelation, but doctrine is all the different departments of that revelation. So God expanding and and he's, 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 he's expounding and talking to you about strong stuff. And giving you line upon line, precept upon precept. It said, especially those that do that. Look what it says here. First, first Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. And, and, and saints, there's something powerful about First Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. It says, for the scripture says, do not muzzle the ox that is uh, uh, treading out 
corn. Don't muzzle the ox. First Timothy chapter five, verse 18 says, don't muzzle the ox. The scripture says, the Bible said it just like this. The scripture says, don't muzzle the ox that's treading out corn. Now, what does that really mean? And then it, at the end of the text in verse 18, it says that the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do you know what that mean? The laborer, the man of God is worthy of his money. So when you, when you see the man of God blessed and rich, they worthy. They have received an anointing to receive that money. That's what their wages is, their payment, their paycheck, their income. Says, but what is an ox? What did the ox really represent? The ox represent a strong anointing. The ox represent a strong anointing. The ox represent the strength of the Holy Ghost. The Samson realm before the fall. The strength of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of might, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. It represents a strong glory flowing, strong wisdom, strong understanding, strong prophetic anointing, strong, strong apostolic grace. It's saying, operate in strong sowing when you're connected to a strong anointing. Did you just catch what I said? It said operate in a strong anointing, a strong sowing hands when you are encountering a strong anointing. Your, your sowing should be strong in alignment with the strong ox that's feeding you. See, the corn represent the word. Oh, my God. The corn represent the... Ah. It represent the doctrine. It represent the impartation. It represent the prophetic that's flowing. That's why Joel started talking about God restoring the corn. God was going to restore teachers and the prophetic impartation to you. Ha! Ha! Makaraba zorebeke rezede. Rande vezorraba sakara makaraba sarama. Rendezvous. Oh, I heard the Lord say, poor money coming to me now. I heard the Lord say, poor, I'm about to get off here. The Lord say, poor. Money coming to me now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm about to pull again, man. Everybody, when I pull out, everybody pull. We about to, we, oh, Jesus, this about to get hot in there. Come on. Saints, there's an anointing on this for real. There's an anointing on this for real. Huh? There's anointing on this for real. Somebody give God praise where you are. Lord, I praise you for everything I have. I praise you for all that you have done for me. I thank you for all your goodness. Lord, thank you for my vehicle. Thank you for a house. Thank you for everything I got. Thank you for an apartment. Thank you for thank you for children. Thank you for whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clothes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Start thanking God where you are. Thank you for what I got. Thank you. 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 Maka rande revosa. Rande revasa. Rata paso corre vese que rede. Lord, I thank you. 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 I praise you, Lord. 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 Come on, we're about to pull one more time. Money 